Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses as we continue with part 28, lesson 27 of the Illumined Faith, Mystical Interpretation of the Gospel of St. John by Ars Winburn Clymer. Lesson 27, the flesh cannot know God, but he who purifies the flesh may become like the Father and thus may know God. St. John chapter 8, 21 through 37. 21. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Jesus, through a life of obedience to the divine law, and through the deliberate efforts he had made while under the training of the masters in the east, had freed the flesh from evil. Through intelligent application of the law, he had transmuted fleshly tendencies into the conscious individualized soul. Through this transmutation, he had become the Son of God. The Jews to whom he spake were still living the carnal life and knew nothing of God in actual experience. Consequently, if they should continue to live the carnal life, they would die because they had not created anything immortal, while Jesus, having created an immortal soul, would go to the Father. 22. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. 23. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. They were unenlightened. They lived in the desires of the flesh and were consequently earthly. From beneath, Jesus lived in the soul. The soul lived in heaven and consequently was from above. 24. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Unless man frees himself from evil or sin, he shall die. The divine spark that is within him will not die because, to that as such, there is no death. It will return to the Father whence it came. But, as the one in whom it had been planted, had made no effort to bring it to consciousness, to individualize it, to feed it, to cultivate it, it returns to the Father just as it left him. It is unindividualized, non-dynamic, potential state. The personality, that which is the carnal man, having no immortal fire within, will die. Personality is not eternal, and, as there is no individuality, no conscious soul, there is nothing that can live in the condition of individualization. Only those who have found the kingdom of heaven and have cultivated the solar nature into an individualized entity can continue to live as individuals. 25. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. 26. I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. 27. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. 28. Then said Jesus unto them, When we have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall we know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. When the Son of Man is lifted up, which means when the Son of Man has been changed or transmuted, he becomes the Son of God. The man of flesh, when changed from the carnal to the divine, is the Son of God and knows the Father. He has come into his divine inheritance. 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always these things that I please him. He who is become the Son of God is never alone, for in his temple dwells the living God. The fire upon the altar is always attended to by the Vestal Virgin, which is purity of thought and act. 30. As he spoke these words, many believed on him. 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If ye continue in my word, 
means if ye continue to live the life that Jesus taught by his words, he taught the true life and lived the true life. If we accept and live as he lived, we will become the character he was. 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And what is the truth? To know that God made man after his likeness and in his image, and that God is the soul that dwells within man. To know God and Jesus Christ whom he hath sent. This is the truth. God was not made after the image of man, but God made man after his own image. As all things are in God, it follows that, being in God's image, man likewise contains all things, though in a lesser degree. But man must develop his God-likeness. He must develop his God-consciousness. The image of God in man is in a potential state and must be evolved and unfolded and brought to vital consciousness. This man does by living the life indicated by the divine law. The truth of God is potential, involved in man's nature. But it must be evolved and make dynamic and allowed to function in his life. Truth, functioning in man's nature, sets him free from error and sin. Truth and goodness are already with him, but he must come to know them and to know his creator. To know the truth means to become conscious of the infinite. The consciousness sets man free from the entanglements of the self-life, and thus makes him free to act and move and have his being in a higher realm of realization and experience. He lives on a higher plane of consciousness, as the bird sat free from the eggshell is on a higher plane of existence. God is love and light and life. The more we have of love for all things in our natures, the more of God we have in us, and the more we will become like him. 33. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. A man may be a slave to another man and still be a free mortal. For, though his body may be bound to another, the soul cannot be bound except by himself. The man that lives an evil life is a slave, not necessarily a slave to man, but a slave to his own evil thoughts and desires. There is no bondage equal to bondage to one's own petty self. He who lives the life of the flesh is a slave of flesh, while he who lives a life in harmony with the divine law, although he may serve another man in bondage, is indeed a divinely free man. 35. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. 36. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. 37. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. This should be interpreted as the experience of the soul in general. The soul that is born in flesh and darkness either gradually destroys itself through neglect of its divine possibilities or accepts the truth and ultimately finds illumination and immortalization of soul. One born in bondage to the senses and pleasures that belong to the senses is loath to give them up. But, in some way, the truth that comes into his life, he has clearly shown that the wages of sin is death. Yet, he wishes to continue in the old way because it is the way of pleasure. But he remembers the truth that has come to him, and something within continually reminds him of it. Although it has not yet become a part of his consciousness, he may try to crush out that something, that voice, which is within, for it has not yet found a permanent resting place in his nature. It seems foreign to his former self. It is the voice crying in the wilderness. He may try to rid himself of it because it interferes with his peace of mind. Yet in time, he becomes thoroughly convinced that this voice is the voice of his own better nature, his own higher self, his own soul. 
In time, also, the truth and the voice become thoroughly established in his nature, until it is natural for him to obey the dictates of the law of love and goodwill towards all creatures, until the pleasures of the lower self no longer are a temptation to him. The true life, the true character, qualities of a Christly soul and service to humanity are in themselves their own true and satisfactory reward. The son thus makes himself free, free from the errors of a selfish personality, free on the plane of higher thought and realization. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.